conference teams. Our officials are from the Big Ten Conference. Phil Boba, Dan Chrisman, and Mike Spanier. And we're ready to go. As you see, Andre Patterson is starting at center, and he'll play there. Indiana has never lost a classic game, 42-0. See if that streak doesn't continue. Patterson able to get the tip from Evans. Indiana going a little different way than we're used to seeing. We're used to starting away from the, the home bench, but tonight they're right in front of them to start the game. Patterson with a quick shot, and Miller. So just the two guys who Indiana wanted to get the offense have two quick shots uh, off the start. Patterson didn't really look in sync, but great job by Charlie Miller, the thing we talked about, using his, his skills to get inside and get the get the rebound and put it back in. You mentioned Arsic likes to drive. He got to the baseline but missed that shot. I think Indiana is really going to force Pekka Arsic to drive. We're going to call an offensive foul on Wilkerson. It's good to see Indiana set some good solid screens even, even if they do get a couple fouls early. I thought Sharon Wilkerson really played a key role in that Kentucky game. Indiana coming away with a loss but uh, some guys I thought really stepped up and really did a great job for Indiana up at the Hoosier Dome, or at the RCA Dome. He was able to come just inside the lane there below the foul line and get a couple nice jumpers. So see if he can continue that tonight. Garner is 31 for Delaware. A little miscommunication right there. Indiana got lucky as Garner missed the jump shot. Quickly down to Patterson, good spin dribble. As he tries to go up, Greg Smith draws that foul. Patterson, nice job of getting up at the floor. He's a guy that has tremendous athletic ability, very, very quick, can move up the floor. Neil Reed finds him, good catch right there. He needs to spin and just go right up, go strong. Right there, good foul by Delaware, able to, if you're gonna foul him, foul him so they don't get three. This is where Indiana struggled, only 54% from the free throw line. And sure missed that man. time by Patterson. Good look at Neil Reed. I think it's a team that's just not real confident with his play right now other than Brian Evans. And because of it, it shows up in other areas. For instance, free throw shooting. So Indiana's up 3-0 as we're just one minute into the ball game. Pressure by man-to-man -man defense. Nearly stolen by Reed. Bruce McCullough, number five in the corner. In watching Delaware, you're going to see a lot of three out and two in. That's a lot. what a lot of people run. The two inside guys, no really set other than just to do a lot of screen for one another, a lot of cross screening. Indiana playing tall as they block that shot. Oh, good rebound there. That's by Patrick Evans. Inside for Delaware. Bad shot there. Wild one to Garner. Got it to hit the rim anyway. And now a foul inside on Indiana. Sometimes tough to uh, to rebound that. The, the shots that are so bad, you can't imagine them taking them. You don't get, uh, you, you don't do a very good job preparing to rebound. And because of it, the other team, other Delaware, comes up with a rebound. But once again, the one thing that really hurts Indiana is penetration. Even though uh, it was a bad shot, still Garner got penetration, got the shot up on the board. 17 points a game by Smith. Pretty good form on that free throw. You can see why he's shooting so well. Very good shot selection on the floor. Delaware made it to the NCAA tournament a few years back. In fact, played at the uh, then Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, were defeated by Louisville. So they're trying to bring the program back up to a level to get them to the tournament. Long pass by Reed. Miller is there. Looked like he had the shot. He's he dishes that. to Patterson, though, for the banker. Good easy shot by Andre Patterson, but Charlie Miller's got to put that ball on the floor one time, go up strong and score that basket. Good job by Neil Reed of finding the open man. Three out, two in now. And again, Pekka tries to drive. He dishes off. Good shot that time. Patrick Evans, 6'5", senior, hits an off-balance shot. Indiana needs to make Delaware drive to the left as Evans going to be called for a traveling violation, but Delaware likes to catch it at the top of the key, and in most instances, they're going to drive to their right. Turnover by Indiana. One-point lead as Bob Knight considers the next his next option. You see Delaware also, they, they do the three, two inside. You can see Patterson runs right away from the basketball, and because of it, 
nobody there to help. And in, in Indiana's defense, you always have to see the ball. You guard the ball first. Not You don't guard people, you guard the basketball. If you don't have the basketball, you can't score. Andre Patterson did not know where the basketball was. He ran away from it. And because of a Delaware, go to the free throw line. There you see the give and take for Indiana. They've got more turnovers than they have assists. Not a stat that you want to have continue the rest of the year. And that's why Indiana stands at two and three right now. A stat that I'm sure that will drive Coach Knight crazy. Two more here. They've played five games, and they've they've had 18 turnovers in two of them, 19 turnovers in three of them. So about six or seven too many in each game. Patterson outside jumper is good. So as Patterson guards up against the center, maybe there is some advantage to bring him outside and use some quickness. He's got six of Indiana's seven points. See Delaware doing a nice job of getting the ball inside. Indiana giving up the post position very early. But with Indiana offensively, this is a team where anybody can play pretty much any position. Andre Patterson is considered the center, but he can go out and shoot that three-pointer. So there ought to be plenty of room inside for Indiana to drive and do a lot of good cutting, just like they did right there with Charlie Miller coming off a good screen by Andre Patterson. And that was Evans who threw that into him on the back cut. And that's four points now for Charlie Miller. So Patterson and Miller, Ted, really have taken off here in the first three minutes of the game offensively. I know Coach is really stressed in practice as far as almost making Charlie Miller and making Andre Patterson take shots. He never had that problem in practice with myself, but uh, <laughs> he uh, he's really stressed at them that uh, they have got to find shots. Great defense by Brian Evans. Smith comes up with it, but Evans and a jump ball, but Evans blocked that first shot. Going to go to Delaware. Possession arrow right there. As we mentioned, you can see good defense. Evans really doing a nice job, not getting in too tight with the body. Got a hand on the basketball. Great defense for Indiana. Change of possession. Andre anticipates. He's got to go to the basket. He's on his left hand. And okay, he lost the ball. He slows that dribble up. Good shot fake by oh, Reed. Good, good, good feed inside by Neil Reed. But the thing that got the, the open man was because Neil Reed Shot fake, and he penetrated. Even though he didn't get all the way to the basket, he penetrated inside. Defense has to come to him. Good. You can see right here, you'd like to see Andre Patterson take this straight to the basket. He loses the dribble right there, and he has to pick it up. But a good job by Indiana. Patterson again on the inside feed. So it looks like Evans has really become an assist man. Patterson now with eight early points. And Brian Evans could obviously take those shots. But I think he understands that for this Indiana team to really be a good, good team as the Big Ten comes around, he has got to get Charlie Miller and Andre Patterson involved in the offense. And you see he's really doing a nice job feeding those people inside. Evans on a drive. He got around Patterson. And good outlet. Long pass to Miller. And the layup is good. Good outlet by Neil Reed. You can see this team's very, very quick, can really get up and down the floor. And Neil Reed, the first thing he does when he gets that ball is he looked up, he's looked up the floor and three times he's found people open. You have Charlie Miller six early points. See Indiana doing a very nice job on Pekka Arsic as they're making him drive the basketball. Travel that time on Patrick Evans. Indiana has jumped out to a 13 to five lead as we have timeout. We'll be back after these messages. Indiana has possession. Man-to-man -man defense by Delaware. There's the shot that Wilkerson got so well against Kentucky this time, though. A turnover, Indiana's third. 75% shooting by Indiana. Shron's got to take that shot. He came off the, the screen looking for the shot. The guy went up with him, but I think he could have double pumped and got it up over him. He's got to do something rather than just throw it away. He's got to get it up on the board something where Indiana has a chance to get it back. Eight points in a row for Indiana. McCullough outside with a jumper. Six month senior, averages just under eight points a game, gets his first two. Andre Patterson has seven points for Indiana, so he and Charlie Miller, the six, have all the points for the Hoosiers. Indiana doing a nice job screening down. There's a lot of open space inside. Evans really created that shot, a couple of shot fakes that didn't fool the defense. He Finally hit a 10-footer on the baseline. Coach talks about patience being a key. You can see Brian Evans very, very patient there finding the shot. He didn't walk into a shot that wasn't there. He waited until it created itself. Good defense by Indiana. Evans, Patterson knocks it out of bounds. 
Patterson does seem a little more comfortable at that center position, Ted, uh, both offensively and defensively. Well, he's a guy that doesn't uh, necessarily need to post, but I think he needs to understand that he can post if, if you know, when, when Lindemann or uh, Ulyazinkovic is in the game, they are always down there in the, in the post posting. So uh, this way, Patterson, he can come out, yet he can go back down in there and post, and it's available if he wants to. Wilkerson right there on Garner, not letting him in. And then a double team and a jump ball, so Indiana gets a great team defense that time. Neil Reed had an excellent game against Kentucky. Also, he really seems to step up in the big game. Obviously, uh, I'm sure at this point in time, Coach Knight feels every game is important. But uh, the Kentucky game, obviously, a game the players look forward to. Neil Reed, two years in a row, has played extremely well against the Wildcats. Evans post, it's awful crowded. Oh, he put that shoulder down and went right into the defense. Draws the offensive foul. It's twice now, he's really trying to create that own shot. This time got him in trouble. Yeah, you're going to take a look at it. You can see there's not really anything there. Good call by the official. You can see Brian just lowered his right shoulder. Drove it right into the defensive player. He's going to call charging on almost every time. Switch that time. McCullough only six foot one. So Brian had a small man on it. One four offense now. Basically going to dribble down, and then uh, the man he replaces is going to replace him at the, at the top of the point. And there's the shot. It creates a three-pointer by Tyrone Perry in the game. It's off. Indiana's been doing a nice job on the boards the entire year. And they grab another one. Neil Reed for three. In and out. And rebound to Delaware. Outside, McCullough does hit this three-pointer. Not getting back on defense. Delaware really doing a nice job making a nice run here. Again, Patterson on the inside. It's a small Delaware team, and that's why Indiana's gone with a smaller lineup. And Indiana's been able to take advantage of their size. See, Indiana doesn't get back here. Wilkerson makes a run at the shooter, but Delaware doing a nice job. Of coming down, bringing the ball down the middle of the floor, filling the spots on the side and getting a three-point shot right there. Andre Patterson comes down, gets good position inside, gets a good pass. That's where he really needs to be a little bit more aggressive. He seems to be a little passive inside. He doesn't really get that ball and take it up strong. You'd almost like to hear him growl when he gets it inside, uh, but he is able to convert the first free throw. He's already got his season average. He almost did, 8-4. Eight, eight Matt Strine, number 44, is in for Delaware. So Patterson and Miller both off to good starts, which we felt were keys to this game. Evans just with two points. 12-38 left, Indiana by six. They control the game from the outset. Typical for Delaware to get a shot. The drive by Strine, Charlie Miller stepped in, but it's not quite set. So he draws the foul. Well, on the scouting report, it said every time they get the ball at the high post, they drive right. And this is the third time in a row. Matt Strine just off the bench, gets it at the high post, drives right. Indiana have to, going to have to do a better job playing to that right hand, making them, if anything, go left. Also going to have to be able to help out a little bit better down inside. Penetration continues to hurt Indiana. Tough choice now for Indiana. Charlie Miller playing well, but he does draw a second foul. You hate to have that third foul picked up in the first half, especially with 12-23 left, a long way to go. So we'll see if Charlie stays in or if uh, coach decides to make a substitution. Stride is good and on both, and Indiana's lead now down to four. So after that 8-0 run, Delaware's come right back to make it a close game. Right there, you got to give it to Patterson right there, and he's got to use some moves and get the shot. He does. On the double team, he dishes around. Reed is the open man, and there's a three point. Great offense right there. And that's what happens. We talked about the inside outside. You can see Indiana got it down inside. They double team. The nice pass by Patterson back out. Wilkinson finds the open man for the easy three pointer. Good double team there. Oh, a good drive that time by McCullough. We're going to count that basket, but a foul on Evans saying the shot left his hand before the contact was made, but that's the weak side help that's needed. Here it is. Good call right here. You see the ball leaves right there, and then he makes the contact with Brian Evans. A good call by the official. Seven points now. We've got timeout. It's 19-14. Indiana leads it. We'll be back after these words from your...
Tonight's Big Ten game is a copyrighted telecast of Created Sports Incorporated. Any use or rebroadcast or the transmission of any or all of this game without the express written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. There you see the IU cheerleaders. And it's a little quiet, Ted, uh, because of the snow here in Bloomington. Even the local fans here have had trouble getting here. Not nearly the capacity crowd that we would expect. And we'll see a late crowd as they show up. Two games tonight, Citadel and Bowling Green follow Brian Evans on the reverse layup there. Good feed by Reed. Four points now for Evans. Indiana continues to keep it spread. You can see Patterson not waiting for the defense. Evans helps him out there. Indiana with a good steal. Oh, good fake right there by Neil Reed, giving Charlie Miller the shot. And Charlie Miller is not hesitating at all offensively, so he is involved and scoring well. That's nine first half points. Neil Reed really doing a nice job of setting people up there. Just the really, just a little fake right there creates a big opening for Charlie Miller. Good help and recover by Reed on McCullough. Brian Evans, two steals in a row. As this time he comes around the low side. Charlie Miller, same spot, passes it up. Boy, good passing there. Wilkerson for three is short. A little too far outside. The, the passing was crisp. What a shot from a couple steps out too far. I'd like Indiana's to see Indiana move the ball the way they did right there, though. Very, very quick, crisp pass. Largest lead of the game now, Indiana by 10. They've built that rather quickly as we approach the 10 minute mark, first half. See Brian Evans really laying off. They're going to make him shoot the jump shot as he did. Great rebound by Delaware. Two on now. Pat, yeah, not coming up with it. It's two on one. Oh, good steal. McCullough slaps it away because Charlie Miller had it done. And Delaware sets their defense. 1 4 by Indiana. There's the shot Wilkerson had against Kentucky. Just off this time. But he needs to be involved in the offense as well. And that's a good shot. Good one on one by Neil Reed. And. Palming is called there, carrying the ball, and good pressure by Reed. I'm sure the defense for Indiana, you see Evans, he's got position behind him and he just slides around him. A good post player will not let you slide around him like that. A good post player is going to hold your, hold his position, going to make you foul him coming around, but Brian Evans, a good, smart defensive play right there. Four steals now, Evans, that was a pass that got deflected. Now, would you give him an assist on that one, Ted? I think assist he got and a goal? Yeah, I think right. have Chalk it up. Chalk it up, Terry. <laughs> as, as Brian Evans hits the jumper, but was looking for the pass first. Took advantage of the situation as he saw it. Six now for Evans. Good pressure. Reed's got uh, Delaware way outside starting the offense. Block. Kind of a really? hesitation dribble there. Good play by Delaware. Yeah, you really hate to see that. Indiana, the Delaware had not really done anything in their offense. Shot clock is down to 12. And then the thing we talked about, dribble penetration. Indiana not able to get their feet over in front of the man. And because they draw the foul. First on Reed, long pass out. Goes out of bounds. So Delaware's having trouble on the out of bounds play. Turnover gives it back to Indiana. Mike Bray, a look of concern. He knew it would be tough coming in here to play Indiana, but wanted to put some good teams on the schedule to test his squad early. Chris rolls in the lineup as Andre takes a break. Richard Mandeville also for in for Indiana. Look for Richard to be in there setting screens, getting people open. Almost 11 minutes before Indiana made a substitution. Colin Miller. All the way and gets the easy layup. Miller offensively has been terrific. 11 first half points. I make that comment. In the Kentucky game, the starting lineup for Indiana played two minutes and 12 seconds in the entire game. Near steal by Rolls. Delaware having a real tough time breaking this Indiana defense. Another turnover, this time by Garner outside. Well, we're going to get a 20-second timeout here. They need to regroup. Mike Bray can see that. It's 28-14. It was 16-12. Indiana had a four-point lead. So make that a 12-2 run by the Hoosiers. Well, I think the thing you see with Delaware, very similar to, to Duke, got the score if Indiana's going to be successful. There's your turnover picture that's killed Delaware. Charlie Miller is a quick player, Ted. 
And if he can play that forward position, that quickly sells him more going against some forwards. Delaware falls into almost a 2-3 zone here. It's a, kind of a chaser as Arsic is chasing Evans and uh, the other guys are playing kind of a 2-2. Evans didn't get the shot, but missed it. Right at eight minutes left, first half, Indiana by 14. They doubled the score. Travel. Delaware could have been a travel, but a foul called on a hold on Mandeville. Coach Knight calls Brian Evans over. He's talking to him about what type of defense Delaware put on last time. And, uh, it really did look like a 2-2 two, two, two with the chaser on Evans. In that situation, I'm sure Coach, will, in most cases, will tell whoever the one guy they're chasing to really do a lot of screening and popping out to try to confuse the defense. And also run that first time down the floor a few passes so they can see what the defense is and then know what to plan for it the next time down. Evans hits that free throw. He said it's a very quiet crowd here in Bloomington. Uh, we only had about 15 minutes to get here tonight, but it took us about 45. The roads are quite treacherous out here, especially you get down to Bloomington Road a few hills. And, uh, because of it, not near as many people here in Assembly Hall tonight. Indiana leads comfortably. Where's the 2 3 zone? It's kind of a matchup. They, the, the wing guys are really going out and matching up with the wing. Three seconds on Mandeville inside, so another turnover by Indiana. And a timeout. Indiana leads at 28-16, 7.50 left. First half, and we'll be back after this. And we're back to action. See Delaware really struggling offensively. They just can't seem to get into any type of set. Evans on the help. Arsic has to pick his dribble up, throws it back out. You'd think it'd be easy to do, but not today against Indiana. Another turnover. Make that 10 now. Mike Gray thought it was tipped, which would not be then an over and back violation. He doesn't get help that time, though. So Indiana have to run an 8-0 run earlier in the half, and now on a 9-2 run. And back in control by 12. Indiana not really played against a zone defense, and they've played against it three times, the last three times down the floor, and they've turned it over twice. Indiana Six. gonna get lucky as Garner runs over Wilkerson. Six turnovers now for Indiana. Let's check the call. It is gonna go on Garner. And Rob Garner, 31. Take a look at the fast break right here. Wilkerson, no chance to stop him, so the best thing you do is you stop when a man leaves his feet right there. Wilkerson a little bit up under the basket, but that's the only chance you got. Good decision by Sharon Wilkerson. Breaking the action. No basket. The they don't Delaware. count the basket because it was on the pass. Uh, exactly. The foul was on the man who passed the ball, not the man that shot it. You see Delaware sets up in kind of a box right there, and then you've got Arsic chasing Evans inside. Evans trying to get inside, set some screens. Indiana going to have to be patient, penetrate, and then dish. There it is. Evans dished. And Wilkerson gets caught off his feet with a charging foul, his second. Same exact same exact thing. Delaware gets caught on the other end. You can see you can't lose, leave your feet. Good job right here. Delaware steps in there, does a nice job, takes that charge. They get to go down. Smith's going to shoot two free throws. Or a one and one. Greg Smith, 6'7", junior. I mean, 13 straight shots last year in a game. Easily a school record. Big, strong kid. Has a nice touch from the free throw line. Three-year starter at Delaware. They start three seniors and two juniors, so it's an experienced team. But a little out man tonight against Indiana. Indiana by 10 now, just under seven minutes left, first half. Charlie Miller doesn't hesitate on that three-pointer. One pass and a three-pointer. Pretty good confidence by the young man. 14 first half points for Miller. If the shot's there, I just feel like you have to take it. Charlie Miller, nice job right there. Good steal by Andre Patterson. Indiana did not have the numbers, so Wilkerson brings it out. Reads open. That's all. One pass. He knew exactly where the ball was going and chased it down. Inside, Patterson is going to draw the foul. He he really is 
using his strength inside to create offense for himself. And he really feels much more at home. As, nice job by Evans right here. You can see, look where he throws the ball. The ball is right away from the defense. There's no way that defender can get his hand on it. Patterson, nice job of holding the defense off. And as you said, feels very comfortable on the post. Brian Evans got to get into that guy. When you get him off his feet, you either have to drive around him or lean up into him, draw that foul. Good pick by Patterson. Reed passes on the shot. Offense does look sharper tonight for Indiana. More purpose in the cuts. Oh, Charlie Miller on the pass from Evans. Gets the easy basket. 16 now for Miller. You see the guys getting getting more used to working with one another. You can see Evans just kind of a, a nod of the head right there is all he needed in Delaware, throws the ball away. We've seen this repeated, 13 turnovers as Indiana runs good offense, force a turnover at the other end, then come right back down and score again. You see Delaware back into more of a man-to-man -man before they were playing more of a shell. Indiana has been very, very successful whenever they've played man-to-man. Wilkerson goes baseline, dishes back. Patterson off, Charlie Miller keeps it alive. Although an Indiana player not able to come up with it. Cullah has it. Oh, good dish that time as Patterson came to help. And easy layup for Smith. Call a really a nice job driving to the basket. Smith just positioned himself right under the basket. Maybe that's why he made 13 in a row in a game. Steal by Delaware. Here's Garner again with the layup, so four quick points now for Delaware and a full court press. Putting on a little pressure right there after the made basket, trying to surprise Indiana. Indiana did a nice job at, against Delaware right there, and they did a nice job against Kentucky handling the press. Wilkerson, oh, the ball went right into the net. It slowed Wilkerson down a little bit, his, his ability to grab it and get the shot away, and it got blocked. Sean kind of got caught right under the basket. I think he wanted to catch that in the air and just put it up. He looked up, and you'll see he finds himself right under the basket. Good lob right here. You see he catches it, and he's right under the basket, so he couldn't go right up with it. You see the Delaware, McCulloch does a nice job, makes a good block, but he does get quite a bit of body right there, and he got him on the wrist. Wilkerson a little long there. You know, the big concern about Sharon Ted was that leg and how would he recover. He has not missed one minute of practice time so far this year. He has been out there at every practice. He's and a tough kid to too. See. Missed both free throws, however. Evans gathers the ball underneath, a tip that time by Smith, but offensive goaltending. That's Bill Bolden from the outside, said the ball was still on the rim. Good aggressive play by Delaware. You're gonna see though, the ball just just stays up on the rim. Good job right, right here by Ryan. He puts it up. You can see right there the ball is just, it's coming off the rim, but it's still up there, and the official's going to call that most of the time. McCullough leaves with seven points. And a quick first half. What well, good pass by Evans. Charlie Miller found himself open. Brian Evans found him. He's got to catch that ball and get that ball in the hole. Out of bounds play by Indiana. They usually try to set pick then for Evans. And you see Charlie Miller sets one, and now Wilkerson does weak side, but nothing open there. Reed loses control, saves it before it goes out of bounds. Miller near the 10 second line, so Indiana struggling. Five seconds shot clock. And a block that time by Patrick Evans. May not have known the shot clock was down as far as it was because Indiana was struggling to get the shot away. Evans has to understand. I mean, Coach Knight's up there yelling at the official that the guy's all over him, and then he goes over and he bodies him more. I mean, right here he's really bodied him. Now he goes over and he, he you know, he bodies up against him again. There's just no way that he's going to get that get that call at, uh, in Assembly Hall. I mean, maybe at home he might have a chance, but no way. Neil Reed leaves. Some instruction from Coach Ron Felling. Three first half points. Charlie Miller at the line. Best game of the year so far by Miller. I think there will be a lot of them to follow if he just gains a little bit of confidence. And he needs to understand that he's a very, very important part of this Indiana offense. He has to understand he needs to get out there and score 10, 15, 20 points a night, depending on what the defenses are doing, what they're giving them. And uh, once he understands that, uh, it'll make this Indiana team a much more potent offensive team. Well, that was the message this week in practice. He's evidently paid attention. So 
nearing his career high of 21 points here in the first half. Penetration. One thing we really talked about here. You can see Delaware penetrates all the way to the basket. Gets an easy layup against the Indiana defense. Indiana by 11, 342 left, first half. This unit in there has done a nice job offensively. That's where Chris Rawls needs to catch. A little shot fake, drive around to the basket. Indiana, they don't catch in a position where they're looking to drive and get any penetration. The one thing Coach Knight has been looking for. And Sharon open on the three-pointer, but comes up short. Rebound right in front of the Indiana bench. And timeout. It's Indiana by 11 as we approach the close of this first half. We'll be back after this word from your local station. The 20th anniversary of the 1976 national champion team was held last night. And there's some of the coaches, the managers, and players. Steve Green, a member of the 75 team. Maybe the best team to ever play. Here Bobby Wilkerson, Wayne Radford, and plenty of basketballs to sign. And Steve here today with his uh, young son, Michael, and their daughter watching the Hoosiers. It was a great event last night. No one in the last 20 years has been able to have that undefeated season and win the national championship. So a real credit to that 76 team. Great to see them back here in Bloomington. Whistle now away from the action. Going to call it on Andre Patterson. That's the second screening foul Indiana's got tonight. You really have to watch yourself when you're setting screens out, really way out in the open. When you go down on the block, you're setting screens down on the baseline. Uh, they they kind of let you get away with it. You set a screen out in the open, and uh, the officials, it's really got to be a clean screen. In that case, Andre Patterson moving just a little bit, and they got him for the foul. Todd Lineman checks in for the first time. Andre Patterson leaves. Gets a good hand from this crowd. They've seen an improvement. Seven points for Andre, who may seem a little more comfortable with that center position than he has at forward. Seemed like it in the first half. Easy rebound on the missed free throw. Lindemann trying to post up inside, and he's going to draw a foul. Greg Smith is really outmatched. Only 6'7", going against the big seven-footer. Push to prevent the ball from coming inside. Neil Reed checks in. You forget how big Lindemann is until he gets in there. Uh, you know, Smith hasn't really seen anybody seven foot this evening. All of a sudden, Todd steps in there seven foot and about 280, and uh, he's a big, big man. Yeah, struggling again tonight from the free throw line. As Lindemann misses, good shot fake there. Strine will be called for over the back. So the blockout position. Indiana's playing a pretty good game here. Good blockout by Brian Evans. Just a good, smart play. There's no way that Strine's going to get that ball without going over Brian's back. So put Evans up at the line. Double bonus now for Indiana. Brian Evans at the line, 34. Shot Eight. fake. And that shot comes up short. Evans hits the first, he's got seven. Brian Evans really given the team some, some wonderful leadership. I thought in the Kentucky game it really showed the other day. Indiana comes out, just gets blitzed to start the game, 18 to four, and Brian Evans really hit some key shots. That, that game could have easily been a blow away right away, and Brian Evans got him back in the game, and Indiana really had a chance to win that basketball game if they just made some of the big plays. Powerful Kentucky team. That, that team uh, should do well in the Southeastern Conference and the tournament. Indiana going to see two of the more powerful teams here in December. They've already seen the one we're going to call traveling right there on Delaware, but they already saw the one in Kentucky. And uh, in, a, in a week or so, they're going to get a chance to go see Kansas, a Kemper Arena in Kansas City in Kansas, maybe the best team in the country right now. 15 first half turnovers now for Delaware. You see Delaware in the 1 2 2 zone right now. Indiana did. Didn't do a very good job of playing against. This is where you really got to get some people popping up in the middle and you really got to work the baseline. You need some penetration into the zone and then people have to pop into the open positions. Neil Wright on the drive. Wilkerson not 
ready for that shot. There really wasn't one there. As Delaware recovered and a foul. Things we're talking about, you really, against the zone, you have to come in from behind the zone when you're working up, up the lane and in the middle. You've got to come in behind where the zone can't see. The zone is following the basketball. So you've got to come in behind the zone, pop up, you've got to catch, and either you have to know you've, you turn around, you've got the shot very quickly, or there's got to be people popping into open spots where you can hit them and they can go up to the jump shot. Charlie Miller leads to a big hand, 18 first half points. Miller was looking for offense tonight. And he found it, and also some good shooting. He's only three shy of his career high. Lindemann misses another one. He's not going to have to look far because there's offense in those bones if he just, just lets it happen. If he just gets out there and plays the game, just relaxes, and uh, does the things that Coach Knight has set up in the game, he's going to score points, and he's going to help this Indiana team. Lindemann is off on both of those. Under two minutes now, first half. Indiana by 13. Indiana doing a nice job defensively, helping one another through the screens, doing a good job communicating. You see right here a screen coming up, Neil Reed. Nice job by he and Evans talking, getting one another through the screen, pulling Neil Reed through the screen. Outside jumper is off. And again, the block out there. Evans has the rebound. A great first half by Indiana. Wilkerson. Avoids the travel. Evans double team. Robbie Eggers in the game for Indiana, 32. Evans now for three. Yes, exactly where he was taking him from warm-ups today. He knocks down another one. Nice job by Indiana moving the ball. And I think something should, should be said about Robbie Eggers. I thought in the Kentucky game, he really come in and did the things that he needed to do. He stays within himself in the game plan as Evans knocks it away, dives on the floor. They're going to get Brian Evans for a foul, but that's a good hustle foul right there. He, he felt Arsic was really holding him off going to the basketball. You can see Evans going to pop out in the passing lane right here. Gets his right hand on it. You can see he feels like Arsic is holding him off, but they're going to get him for taking Arsic's legs out from under him. But back to Robbie Eggers, I thought he just did an outstanding job of coming in, playing within himself, doing what he needs to do. And I thought he was one of the better players in the, in the, in the Kentucky game on Saturday. Now each of these players has a specific role, and November, December is the time when you start to uh, learn what that role is and find out the best way to, to play. That's why we had another change in the starting lineup tonight as, as Coach Knight still looks for the right combination. And this one has worked well as they did go 11 minutes before a substitution. Phil Bova calls a little timeout as Evans got landed on by Arsic and might have be a little short of breath. And Bova's given him a minute to, uh, to catch his breath before play starts. I think that's all it was. Brian is going to stay in the game. 46 seconds left, first half. Arsic hits that one. So it's Indiana by 14. Oh, you like to see Hook it. shot. He leaned right into a good move. It just didn't go, but that's the shot Indiana's looked for. Shot clock is off. Delaware can wait for the last shot if they'd like. And they will. There were the clock as Garner peeks up. Coach Gray stood up and stopped them as they came across half court. Down by 14 right now. He wants them to either go down 12 or 11 or 14 at the absolute worst. Garner's going to get it on his own. Tries to dish. Oh, good. Lindemann with the block. Three seconds. One more chance. It's off. And the horn sounds. Good defensive sequence there by Indiana. 40 to 26, the Hoosiers lead as Bob Knight takes his team to the locker room. We'll be back with our halftime after this. As we start this second half, see what type of adjustments Delaware's made trying to get into their offense. Had a lot of trouble getting into their offense. You can see they still like to give it to the wing and then like to kind of go one-on-one, -on -one, very similar to what Duke does. Out of bounds, Indiana has possession. We mentioned Miller with a great first half. Evans with a slow start, but got 11. Patterson got his early. And McCullough, the leading scorer for Delaware. 
Wilkerson, shot fake. Well, you can see how effective those shot fakes could be. Patterson outside, looks real comfortable on that jumper. We can see this team really keeps the floor spread, really makes the other team play defense all over the half court. When Andre Patterson steps out and hits a 20-footer and he's the biggest guy on the floor, you know it's going to be tough when you're the other team. Turnover. Indiana has position. I mentioned uh, 15 turnovers. I stand corrected. The 12 is the figure coach is looking for. Now Cross is posted in the Indiana locker room. Likes to keep that 12 turnovers per game. Motion offense, Evans, baseline jumper, leaned back on that shot, came up short. Good screen by Neil Reed right there, but he's kind of fallen away and because of it, comes up short. Patterson with the block on Arsic and a travel. Delaware really struggling to get some offense going. 18 turnovers, Mike Bray's seen enough and calls timeout. Just not getting any type of offense. Minute and a half into the Second half, and Bray is called timeout on a block by Patterson. Indiana by 16. We'll be back after the Bowling Green Falcons. They'll be playing in the second game. I still think it'll be Bowling Orange. Well, they look like Bowling on. Green to me. Yeah, they got their orange on tonight. Uh, the Citadel and uh, Columbia Blue and White are at the other end. Indiana off on that shot, didn't draw iron. And Delaware has the fast break. And that basket good by Greg Smith. I think I'm getting the idea how Smith shoots 70%. Kicks. He's not really going out very far from the basket. Give him eight for the night. He's not, uh, taking, not taking too many chances out there on that 20-footer. He hasn't seen range like yours, I'll tell you. Bad shot by Brian Evans. That, that, that ball has no chance. Crowd wanted goaltending, but uh, good no call right there. Tried to lean into that one on the baseline. Trying to draw the foul, but the defender did a nice job holding his position. Arsic has been stopped very, very well by Indiana as he takes that shot off the rim. Again, easy rebound to Indiana. Oh, good pass. Patterson, they saw that against Kentucky. Neil Reed saw him coming from the far side. Nice job by Charlie Miller, who was leading the pack, and Neil saw him early. Nice job of Andre Patterson kind of following up. Charlie Miller ran through the lane. As you can see, uh, the rim once again, uh, the rim has not popped back up to where it should be. I can remember them doing that after you dunked in your college career, Ted. Yeah, yeah, you remember it. it. You remember it's it's very good. Rim. <laughs> the only reason it would have ever <laughs> been like that is you take a look at the, the, the replay. Andre Patterson, nice job. Good catch going straight up. But the only reason it would have ever been like that is if I would have shot one of those high rainbow, rainbow jump shots and it just happened to bend the rim, maybe. <laughs> it wasn't because of any dunking going on. All right, looks like everything's in there under control now. And Andre above his season's average. So Indiana's getting the offensive effort they needed from both Miller and Patterson. Evans not approaching his season's average, but I think Indiana would rather see some balance, more balance going than they had earlier this season. He's only doing a nice job defensively. He's not putting a lot of pressure on, but he's, he's doing a pretty good job of containing, you see right there. As soon as I mention it, they go right around him, go to the basket, and he's going to get a chance to shoot two. Gets into the lane. Rob Garner, nice nice move to the basket. Boy, especially the middle. You know, getting into the middle is, is absolutely deadly. Because when that uh, point guard uh, can get inside, he can go right or left. If he's going to beat you on the baseline, this is only one way they can pass out. But when you think of the great defenders in Indiana, you think of Buckner and Wilkerson when, when they were out there. They could obviously put a lot of pressure up, but it was so hard to get around Buckner. You know, he, he I mean, he and uh, Grody used to beat once another up when they used to play the Kentucky, or I mean Michigan. But uh, uh, this team, not as good defending. Uh, they, they just can't seem to contain people. And it ha doesn't have a lot to do with quickness. It's just positioning yourself. This team is going to have to do a better job. His offense is not in sync yet. Evans nearly throws it away. It's stolen instead by Patrick Evans for Delaware, and he takes it in, draws the foul. Indiana kind of fell asleep right there on offense. Evans picks up his dribble. There's nobody to throw it to. And just as he throws it, Patterson goes down the screen. Nice job by Smith. Once again, going to take one of those high percentage shots. He goes in. Evans goes after the ball, gets him with the body. Good call, and he'll shoot two. Evans' third foul. Greg 
Jake Smith with that free throw, nine points now. So Delaware's cut this lead now to 14. And missed there, so still uh, same lead Indiana had at the half. Wilkerson down quickly. Had the open shot, throws it away. Patterson nearly steals it. And now it's four on three for Delaware. It leaves McCullough open for three, and he hits it. So Delaware making a run back into the game. They trail by 11. Indiana with only four second half points here. And we're three and a half minutes into the second half. Good Evans fake shot fake. fake. He saw he had the height advantage, but missed the shot. Patterson grabbed Perry, but no foul. And Indiana has a turnover. Neither team looking very good right now. One pass, Reed on a three-pointer. Early in the season, we didn't see that one pass. I've seen it three times now, one pass, and a three-point shot going up, giving Neil Reed six points. He's just falling way back in defensively, and Neil Reed just stepping up and hitting that three-pointer before the defense able to recover back out. Now the tempo slows. Neil Reed has his hands full with the quickness of McCulley. He goes baseline, gets help from Patterson, but McCulley able to hit that shot. Yeah, Patterson's got to be quicker to the basketball right there. Neil Reed driving him, trying to drive him down into that corner. And uh, Patterson's got to step out and not, not let him take that, that little lean in jump shot. Go up strong. He's got it inside. He does go up strong. He gets the little banker and the foul. You see that time he really stepped into the defender. When you step into the defender, you get into his body. That way he can't jump up and make the block. He steps in, he gets, gets his body into the defender, and he goes up strong and makes the play. Right here, Patterson has to step out. You can see he's moving backwards right there. He's got to step out. He can't let McCullough take that shot. You can see right here, Patterson, see how he steps in? Draws the, gets the body into the defender. That way it makes it very, very difficult for that defender to get his timing and jump up and make that block. Patterson converts the three-point play. And Indiana's built its lead now back up to 15 points. One four offense now, high low post by Delaware. Arsic's just having a tough time getting the ball. This time Patterson's able to knock it away. I think Arsic is a big part of their offense, whether he's scoring a lot of points, but they like, they like to have his hands on the basketball, and tonight he's just not been able to make any things happen. There he is on the outside, helped by Wilkerson on travel. Drug his, drug his pivot foot, Phil Bola right on top of it. Now you can see the frustration in Arsic's face. He's been stopped tonight by Indiana. Indiana needs some help at the other end as Delaware goes to the full court press. Charlie Miller comes up. Turnover is 11 now for Indiana. The pressure really getting to Delaware. Charlie Miller, baseline, stops. In and out. Evans there. And a foul. But Miller's not hesitating one bit. He's getting the ball, and he's saying, how can I score? That is great to see. And he really made a good decision right there because I think early in the year we would have seen him try to take that ball all the way to the basket. He probably got a charging foul. Instead, he pulled up, went up for the shot. It was a little hard off the glass, but Indiana really after the, the offensive board. But Charlie Miller looks much more aggressive than looking to score here tonight. Reed with a cut inside. They're going to call a foul, though, on Indiana, setting the pick. And that's Patterson as he tried to set a low pick. Andre stands straight. As you see Coach Knight gives some instruction to Patterson. You can't lean a bit. They try to they'll call that foul on you. Now Patterson has three. Evans has three. The two of those on Patterson are offensive screening fouls. So uh, Coach Knight not going to be very happy. He likes to see his team play aggressive, but it, when it comes down to just getting stupid fouls, you can't do that. Good defense by Neil Reed right there. Good containment. I saw Delaware in some tape, and they just ran their offense without much trouble. But today against Indiana, just won't go. Patterson saves it. 
but it's over and back as Wilkerson had to cross the 10 second line. It's gotten very, very sloppy here in the last three or four minutes. Indiana, they're trying to get into their offense in one or two passes and then looking for that shot. I think they'd be amazed if they made an additional two or three passes, how things would open up. Delaware not really wanting to play defense, so if you make them play just a little bit longer, I think you're going to get some easy layups. Important stretch now for Indiana. Great first half. They've struggled here in the first six minutes. Penetration and the dish. The one thing that Coach Knight continues to pound on, and we kind of pounded on it tonight, but the penetration and dish really hurts Indiana. Neil Reed outside is off. Delaware's making their comeback now. They trail by 12. Here's a four on three. Minola's going to go to the hoop. And offensive foul. Brian Evans was set and drew the foul on McCall. Indiana once again with one pass in the shot. A lot of times, uh, one pass in the shot is not bad. As far as if the, if the open shot is there, you can see good position by Brian Evans. Good drive by McCall going strong to the basket. Evans holding his position, getting the drawing the foul. But when you get a when you get a 10, 12, 15 point lead, the offense or the defense it really makes it tough if you make them play defense every time down. 15, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds every time down continuously. And right now, Indiana not making the defense do that. Miller on the drive. Fight for the ball. They're all over the floor. Russell Evans is going to get called for this one. And that would be four on Brian. Let's see how he picks up that foul. Here's Miller. Charlie Miller going all the way in. This is where you really need to go up strong, get that ball in the basket. See, the ball gets loose on the floor. Everybody gets to diving at. They're going to call Evans right there with the block. Felt like he stuck his hip out there and got the block. Robbie Eggers will come in for Evans at the next dead ball. As we mentioned, Indiana, one of the drills this week in practice was playing without Brian Evans offensively. Uh, we'll get a chance to see how they can play without him here in just a second as uh, Robbie Eggers is going to replace him here. Another turnover by Delaware. As Eggers does check in now. Disappointed Evans as he has to come out of the game with four fouls. He still has his 11 first half points. Gary with some pressure, but Neil Reed brings it in easily. Charlie Miller with the best game of this year for him. Indiana does have to look for other offense now. Evans on the bench. Lindemann in at center. One thing I like about Robbie Eggers is how he gets the ball and he didn't just throw it right away. Good hook by Lindemann. Again, just a little bit strong. But the one thing Robbie Eggers, he gets the ball and he looks to see, gives people a chance to screen down and get people open rather than just getting and passing it right away. Outside shot by Perry is off. Wilkerson. Behind the back dribble to Eggers, layup just off. Lindemann there for a good tip and a foul. Good job by Robbie Eggers filling the lane. Nice left hand, not able to get it in, but Todd Lindemann right there. Nobody gets a body on him. Todd Lindemann able to lay that back in. You see Robbie Eggers kind of fills the lane right here. Wilkerson gets away. Nice little pass. Eggers got to get that one in, but Todd Lindemann, you can see, he gets popped right on the back of the head by, by Arsic. And uh, Todd will get a chance to complete the three-point play. He has struggled from the line today. Much better that time. And Indiana by 15, three points for Lindemann. Mike Bray's had a tough night tonight as Delaware coach. Quite the contrast, his very first year as a head coach, going as Bob Knight's 31st year. Arsic, good shot fake, but Eggers is not fooled. McCullough does decide to take the three-pointer, and good reason is he hits nothing from that. You can see they're not used to Arsic throwing it back out right there. They were all waiting for him to shoot it, and Indiana comes down once again. They make a, make a tough pass, throw it out of bounds. 53-41, Indiana leads it as Coach Knight thinks about it. We'll be back after this word from your local state team. Ron Wilkerson, he was set that time and nails a three. He needs just a little bit more time than Charlie Miller to set, get his feet set. When he does set his feet, very, very good shooter. His first points of the night. Give and go that time. Lindemann helped out, but a strong move inside by Smith. 
Makes him three of four for the night, his 11th point. He's not hurting his percentage any not with the shots all. he's taking tonight. Good over the hit pass right there by Eggers. Over the top of that defense, Lindemann turns and a foul. Charlie Miller gonna have to learn that when he gets to drive and he's gonna have to come to a jump stop and go straight up, he continues to kind of lean in and the defenses are gonna start looking to take charges. Smith got hit in the back of the head that time. Might have been an elbow by Lindemann, let's watch. Good job right there, a screen and a roll. Good, good foot movement right there. You can see how he drop stepped right around Todd Lindemann. That's where Todd Lindemann needs to understand that he is seven feet tall. He's playing against a six, seven guy right here. You can see right here, uh, Lindemann gets bumped right there. He'll be going to the going to the free throw line. But Todd Lindemann defensively needs to understand when he's seven foot and you got a six seven guy in front of you, back off and make that guy shoot up over the top of you rather than use his quickness and go around you. Not in the act of shooting, so only the 15th foul on Delaware, so Indiana gets it out of bounds. Same right spot foul. for Wilkerson. He hits his second in a row. He it up from over there. He likes that corner spot. Two big buckets for Sharon. Got to make Arsic drive. He's a guy that wants to look. Let's see. Patrick Evans open weak side. Coach Knight quickly off the bench. Well, it comes down to communication. What it was is just a cross screen, and then the, the screener cut back up. Nobody able to pick him up, and it just comes down to communication. 15-point lead, just under seven minutes left now, second half. Patterson's back in the game. Got hacked right there on the arm. Got the shot inside. He's still a little bit, uh, I don't know what you might call in slow motion. He just doesn't seem to be reacting. Just reacting and catching and just, just going as soon as he catches the ball. You're going to see the other end. You can see they screen across and then Evans pops back up. Todd Lindemann didn't see the basketball. You got to see the basketball. He turned his back on it. And you turn your back just for a second. You can see what happens. Patterson with the free throw. He's got 16 now. And make it 17. So both Miller and Patterson, the two guys we talked about at the top of the show, needed some offense. They've given it to Indiana. But Coach Knight trying to get them to score some points, I think, so. Patterson tried to reach from behind. I'll pick up that foul. I think, the, I think the thing Coach is trying to get across to him is uh, obviously how important they are to this team and, and this offense. But, you know, you can pound on somebody and pound on somebody, and, and until they really understand themselves that they are a big, important part and they have got to get out there and score points, uh, the point just doesn't seem to get across. So maybe by, you know, them going in tonight, they've both got into double figures. they both played very, very well. Maybe they'll uh, have a better understanding of how important they are to this offense. Smith is up at the line now. Good form there on the free throw. Gray tries to get a little drink there. It's been a long night for him. Although I know his teams look forward to coming in here and playing in the Classic. Good, uh, two good free throws there by Smith. Indiana still comfortably ahead, 15 points. Lindemann and Patterson now working on the low post. Trying to use their height advantage against Delaware. One, th one other thing, Indiana guards like to pick up their dribble before they have somebody to, to pass it to, and uh, they're doing a better job of not doing that. But boy, as soon as you pick up that dribble against a good defensive team, they're gonna really put it on those four other guys, and they make it very, very difficult to move the basketball. Coach Knight wants more movement out of the offense. He's talking to Todd Lindemann about high-low, and that's basically the same type of thing that Delaware started the game. We talked a little bit about a three-out and two-in, very similar to what Indiana would run with three-out. Uh, the three guys out be passers, the two guys inside, Patterson and Lindemann screening for one another, trying to get each other open as Andre Patterson nails the first free throw. Good look at Andre, 6'8 sophomore. Now tied his career high with 19 points. He had 19 against Tulane last year. So both he and Miller right at their career highs. 
Garner being hawked by drive right. Wilkerson. Again, drives right. And good quickest that time by Evans. Draws the foul. Todd Lindemann needs to back off of him a little bit. We haven't seen Evans take an outside shot all night. But the one thing that Coach Knight and the coaches stressed is this team gets the ball. He probably travels right there. But they like to drive right. Neil Reed has got to position his body over there in front of Evans to either take the charge or make him dish that ball off. Indiana gets in a, a position of sometimes they like to play defense with their hands rather than with their feet. Because of it, they get a lot of reaching fouls. You get in the Big Ten against some really quick teams like Purdue and uh, Illinois, uh, you're going to have some problems. Evans cuts the lead to 16. Strine checks back in. That's Strine number 44. For Arsic. Arsic. Arsic leads with six. Officials now over at the scores table. That's exactly what they're talking about. Well, what uh, Mike Gray, now the Delaware coach, reminds me about a substitution. Make sure that Strine came in for the right person. We're ready for action. Miguel, we're putting a bit of a full court press right there. And the question on the number of fouls on the Delaware player. This is where if Indiana really runs some good offense, sets some good screens, in most cases, and you get into the later part of the game, you can really get some easy layups down inside if you spread it out. Patterson all the way inside with the shot. Much more aggressive that time. Knew what to do with it when he got the ball. Yeah, he was looking to score as soon as he got for it. He wasn't, wasn't worried about somebody knocking it away. He just grabbed it. He took one big step inside and laid it in. And I think those are the types of things that uh, you know we're, we feel like Andre Patterson can do on a consistent basis. 21 points for Andre Patterson. And a block shot there. That, chance, that never left the uh, Delaware hand, Charlie Miller. Back outside, that's the penetration, dish back. Oh, you gotta go grab it. Looks like Lindemann had a chance. Oh. Patterson, boy, Lindemann's Good going after it. right there by Todd Lindemann. Gives it up. Oh, good Wilson shot, Fag, he got bumped. He drew the foul and we'll get two shots, so much better offense there by Indiana. Indiana just a little bit more aggressive, but get give Todd Lindemann, who's come off the bench, done a good job. Did a nice job of hustling after, after the basketball right there. I'm going to see a block right here. Only bad thing here is you, you, you want to block it. You don't want to slap down at it quite that hard. A lot of times they're going to give you a foul when you slap at it that hard, especially uh, if you're on the road, you're going to get some type of foul right there. But an excellent position block by Andre Patterson. He's in a great position to get that block. Good second half scoring now by Sharon. He was Held scoreless first half, giving him eight points now in the second half. Arson checks back in. Delaware in some foul trouble now with four different players. Could foul out. Good hand by Sharon, just reaching in and slapping the ball away. Arsic a long step, and Lindemann got caught out of position, and a foul. It's Coach Knight's down, showing Lindemann, he needs to move those feet. He plays defense standing upright, and it's very difficult to move. See how Charlie's got his knees bent. Well, actually, Todd is down pretty good there. He just got there a second late, but he did have some good bend in those knees as he came around to try to protect that drive. He needed to understand that Evans was really up under the basket. And if he just kind of moved and, and put his shoulders parallel to the, the glass right there, there wasn't going to be any place for Evans to go. And he kind of lunged into him. And because of it, Evans threw the foul. Evans hits the second free throw. Indiana by 19, 435 left in the game. He'll read, left his feet. Oh, a good drop pass though to Lindemann and a foul. Todd Lindemann bailed him out right there. Todd Lindemann kind of backed inside and uh, gave Neil Reed a bit of a passing angle. Neil Reed got up off his feet. And there's not much place to go with it right here. 
Now Todd Lemmy, you can see, gives him a passing lane right there. It just goes straight up, goes up strong. Good job. That's a way to finish it off. I'm, that's one point I'm always pounding on is getting that shot in the basket. Todd Linneman did. Missed on that free throw. He's got seven on the night. Marsic never been able to get on track offensively. 14 points a game. And it's coming in, but he's well short of that tonight. Here's Wilkerson. Nope. Took some extra time, but his feet never seemed to be set. Patterson on the board. Goes up strong. It's off. And Evans comes away with it. It's drying left open. Hits the easy shot. Again, just a matter of communication. They get, get messed up inside. They're not communicating, not talking to one another. And two guys got caught up on one guy. And Strine ends up open. Nice job catching, turning, and scoring those two points. Miller is still on the dribble. See, there's not a lot of room. You can see with the smaller lineup that Indiana started with, there's a lot more room for people to move around inside. When Todd comes into the game, boom! That's a high low there. Patterson catches it up high. And then goes right down to Lindemann. Nine points for Todd. And again, that rim is stuck down. And that is the Union 76th point of the game. You can see a great high-low. That's the one thing Coach Knight wanted him to run was high-low. Great job by Indiana. Indiana 77-56. We'll be back after this word. The position right there because of a Patterson able to hit him for the easy dunk. Good high-low. That's something that Coach Knight really looking for. From those two players. Randall and Lindemann, Lindemann both in the game now at the same time for Indiana. Arsic misses that one. Offensive rebound this time. Arsic fires another one. Quick release that time. Gets the jump. Eight for Arsic, so a six below his season's average. Good drive. Wilkerson all the way. He ran out of room though. And turnover. Easy. Basket now for Delaware. Oh, Perry oh. gives it up. And Evans finishes it behind the back pass. Dale Reed had it. Coach Knight is not happy. And Indiana calls timeout. And we'll take a break now as Indiana leads it by 17. And does not make the crowd or Coach Knight very happy. Well, nobody's very happy about it because the ball is loose. Nobody really has possession of the basketball. You see the shot go up. You see Evans with the inside position, but nobody's really got possession of the basketball. Both players got their hand on it. Miller comes away with it, but he also comes away with the personal foul. One thing I think Coach Knight a little bit upset with the second half would be that this team uh, looks a little spurty. You know, they'll, they'll play real good for three minutes and then they're bad for five minutes. Coach Knight doesn't like a team like that. He, he expects consistency going out there and doing your job for 40 minutes. And uh, if you're going to win Big Ten titles, that's the type of things that you have to do. You have to do them for 40 minutes. Evans now with 13 points. Again, full court pressure as we're under two minutes. Left in this ball game. And a 15 point lead. So Indiana will be in the championship game. That'll be at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Great hustle by Charlie Miller. Indiana Saved by Lindemann. Shot clock, they have to understand the shot clock down to 10 seconds right now. Indiana going to have to find a shot. Rolls on the dribble. Charlie Miller down to five. Crowd, uh, Wilkerson took a little bit hurried on that shot. And did not draw iron. Out of bounds to Delaware. Brian Evans has been sitting since about the eight minute mark. He's had had four fouls and Coach Knight took him out of the game. Probably not going to get back in with only a minute 20 left. Good time to use the other players though offensively without Evans, which is what they try to do in practice this week. Outside shot is good this time by Tyrone Perry on the three pointer. Cuts the lead now to 12 points. As we approach the one minute mark, a foul now on Perry. Ten team foul, so it'll be two free throws. 21 is Darren Anderson, 6'7", senior in for the first time. As Evans leads with 13 points, matching the number there on his jersey. Good look at Sharon.
Good on that free throw. We mentioned the Notre Dame game when it looked like uh, Gotch had gotten Wilkerson with an elbow. As we looked at that tape again, it did look like he got hit in the uh, in the jaw. As Wilkerson hits both up. And Indiana is going to win this one now. Minutes ago. Rebound and out of bounds by Indiana. So Delaware gets that possession. Good look at Sharon. He needs to become a leader on this team, and he's he's taken some steps to do that. Arsenal did take an extra step there and has called for it. 25 turnovers for Delaware. Arsic has probably been as frustrated as anybody as, he, as a main part of their offense continues to struggle trying to find shots against this Indiana defense as you take a look at the turnovers. Still 17 for Indiana, as I mentioned. Again, Indiana picks up their ball, picks picks up the ball, and uh, they can, you can see Chris does it again. He's going get, to get away with it. Charlie Miller positions himself inside, and he gets away with it, but Indiana continues to pick the ball up before you have somebody to pass it to. You've got to have somebody to pass it to before you pick that ball up, or defense is just going to make it really difficult. And you see Chris picks it, picks it up. He thinks he's going to pass it. They jump out. Nice job by Charlie Miller taking a couple steps up the lane. Good right hand right there by a left-handed player. Gets slapped across the face, but good job of finishing. He knew he was going to get hit. Nice job of concentrating and finishing off the play. Sharon Wilkerson leads with 10 points. Some words for Coach Knight. Charlie Miller tries to convert this free throw. So both Miller and Patterson come off career high nights with 22 each. And just as we uh, had hoped, they're in the offensive pattern now. Kevin Lemmy, number 23, the senior out of Granger, Indiana, in the ball game for Indiana with 33 seconds left. Every time I look out there and see Lemmy, I think it's Chuck Franz reincarnated. He wears the same number and everything. Gonzalez for Delaware is off. That's Lemmy's second rebound of the year. So he brings it up, and he's going to go to the line. You've got to know how to get in there and get those points late in the game. It didn't take him long. I'm sure the Delaware players are wondering what is going on with this crowd. It's just a guy shooting a free throw. And they, of course, don't know the story of Lemmy being a senior manager on this team, filling in at practice early in the year and getting to dress now for all of the Hoosier games. This being his sixth game. Pretty good form. He gets some good roll. His second point as an Indiana Hoosier. Two of two, 25 seconds left. And Indiana finally, with some good scoring, they're at 84 points. The team had struggled, only 71 points a game coming into the night's game. We'll increase that with a good 84 point performance as well tonight. Perry will be at the line though. And Indiana will have one more possession. So Delaware falls into the consolation game tomorrow. Well, hopefully they've come away with some experience and what it's like to play a team like Indiana. Good spin dribble there by Rolls. And a foul this time by Perry. She shoved Rolls from behind. Coach Bob Knight, as we mentioned, his 900th game, and he'll come away with his 500th, uh, actually 662nd win out of 900 ball games, 73% winning percentage as a college He's the coach. First living Rolls is off on that free throw. Mike Bray and the Delaware Chuck coaching staff. Because he hates Duke for tomorrow's game, and then on to play Duke next week. 13 seconds left. Rolls moved his feet well. Bennett open on a good drive there as he got around Mandeville. Here comes Lemmy. He dribbles the clock, and that ends the game. 
as Indiana wins it 85-68. The coaches meet at midcourt. Our next game will be tomorrow night.